Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you're listening to us. Welcome to a new program of the participatory group. It's an agreement between the City Council of Madrid and UNED to create a community revolving around good practices in public participation. Today with us is a very special guest, Juan Felipe Pinilla Pineda. How are you? It's a pleasure to be here, Marta. He will be telling us, and I'm sure you have heard in one of our radio programs, you've heard Juan Felipe, an expert in participation and conflict solving from the social, economic and environmental point of view. Now, he is going to tell us about a very important strategy and project today. It is being carried out in Bogota. It's what they call Vital Neighborhoods. Tell us, Juan Felipe, what are Vital Neighborhoods all about? And then we'll get on to different questions. Well, Marta, it's something that is very straightforward to approach. It's about modifying or changing the way that citizens interact with their city through very mild changes without huge interventions to physically transform a city. I mean, this can be the case, but the logic behind vital neighborhoods is more about how to create a more walkable city, a more pleasant city for people and citizens in general by modifying the available space for cars. how to use spaces that were traditionally used for cars for pedestrians instead and in more sustainable manners. We're transitioning towards a more sustainable mobility. It's, broadly speaking, a redistribution of our city's space. Now, one of the questions that come up, and first of all, let me tell you, I love the idea of taking measures strategically point by point of our city, talking about mild changes and not big investments and big transformations. So Juan Felipe, I didn't say that he's the director of JFP, his initials. So what is your company's role in this plan of the vital neighborhoods and later please describe how many neighborhoods are involved but yeah let's get first of all onto what your role is and then the physical description and scale of the project well our role was to support the process carried out by the city of Bogota basically through a process of technical support that has been carried out by the World Bank. The World Bank has helped the city to launch this strategy and through this means the bank has hired us, so to speak, to structure, to articulate a management model for the strategy. A strategy that has been launched after several pilot projects that helped us better understand the ways in which we can scale up the strategy and replicate it elsewhere. It has ended up included in the territorial plan for the city. It's got a peer plan in Spain. It was all about making it sustainable with time and making the coordination between public authorities and later with private stakeholders and communities living in these spaces. What we have done is precisely to move forward with regards to what the model should look like, the model of management of these vital neighborhoods strategy for the next 15 years. I love the long-term scope of the strategy and you might be wondering after our description of the neighborhoods. In the case of the participatory group, we are most interested 
in the fact that you are a company that has tried to manage this new dimension of the strategy throughout the pilot projects, but also what is the role of public participation? How important are citizens? Have you channeled participatory processes? How, what is their impact? Because intuitively we might think that they might be very relevant to understand the perceptions of citizens, their needs, but the most complex things are processes. How have you channeled all of the different reactions, the needs of our citizens and the long-term vision? Because a 10-year-old, maybe in 15 years, might not have the same needs. So tell us a bit more about this. Tell us about implementation because I firmly believe that this is key. And it is a pleasure to have Juan Felipe and other people who are working in Latin America because they are they are much more forward, more advanced worldwide, not only in Colombia. They are a benchmark for the whole world. Well, Marta, we have been very lucky, very lucky because our work has been inspired by a pilot project, an initial process in Bogota, specifically in the San Felipe neighborhood, promoted by our public administrations for some years now. And it has helped us understand how the strategy that is aimed at creating 33 vital neighborhoods in the long term can create a lab to, yes, understand how this can be replicated elsewhere or expanded to other parts of the city. Within this process, the authority in charge of interacting with citizens is the city council through their mobility department. Traditionally, they didn't used to work on these kinds of matters. They were looking at more like technical aspects of transport, mobility, urban planning, the one-way streets where it's forbidden to park your car, things like that. But they've transformed their own role and now they're thinking about how they can leverage their capacities, their competences to together with the community, co-design and rethink how we can redistribute the space of the city and to modify the use and leverage spaces. Now, in this pilot project that we had to study in order to propose measures for the other vital neighborhoods, the key component was citizen activation. I love this name. Very interesting because it's not the traditional kind of participation. It was about approaching citizens to get them involved, to engage the community because the community was basically responsible for a huge part of the city's sustainability. As we were talking about before, tactical high impact, low intervention measures. People from the community would be the ones most involved. We're talking about residents, citizens, small retailers. They are the ones who need to take care of and protect the sustainability of these interventions with time. Now that's the experience that the San Felipe neighborhood had, it really helped us think about the activation of communities with regards to implementation of measures and formulas. And then its implementation has had to be cross-sectional. So that's a part that we had to be responsible for. I'm talking about how to make participation cross-sectional and comprehensive. The participation of communities in the areas, since they are the main allies of our administrations. They are no longer 
passive stakeholders. Instead, they need to co-create with our administrations. Exactly. We're talking about stakeholders that are key. Marketing wise, we could even call them final users of the city. I think this is fascinating. And in Spain and Europe, we have so much to learn from these kinds of experiences that, as you were saying, and this is key for me, are low cost but high impact. To conclude this section, because I think you summarized everything really well, and we will probably continue with other workshops and sessions for you to expand on each of the pilot projects and your vision for the city in a more detailed manner. I mean, I just wanted you to tell us that Kickstart experience. I think it was very original, but also very smart in the sense that you didn't create a broad strategy for every neighborhood. No, you implemented a pilot project and this is learned from and replicated elsewhere. That is the logic behind the participatory group, getting to know about good practices and prior experiences to learn to implement these in the future. How can we monitor this project? How can you tell us more about what is happening? I mean, there was a pilot project in the San Felipe neighborhood, but where do you stand in every other neighborhood? And have you seen tangible, not only physical, but also from the social and environmental point of view results? Well, to this day, the process is stabilizing. I mean, there was a first pilot project there are other neighborhoods that are right now going through a planning process. I mean, that's the first plan of every process. It's about asking yourself, how can you redistribute space? How can you create small tactical interventions in a sector to make it easier for pedestrians to coexist with traffic in different parts of the neighborhood. I mean, there's a series of neighborhoods, five specifically, that are today going through this stage because this has all been carried out as a huge part of one of the new key plan of territorial ordinance of the city. This plan establishes that the strategy should have in the mid and long term a th an extension to 33 neighborhoods. So there's one first initial pilot project, then there's re a replication in five neighborhoods that are right now planning the process, but the target is 33 neighborhoods. Now, our contribution was proposing a management model to our citizens. It needs to be implementable, applicable, as long as the strategy keeps expanding, opening up to different spaces and scenarios of intervention. So that would be the situation more or less right now. Well, thank you so much, Juan Felipe. I believe that in these few m minutes, you've left us asking for more. We want to know mo so much more about the Vital Neighborhoods project. We would all like to live in a livable neighborhood. And I feel that these words are perfect. Not only your methodology, but the process, procedures, and how interesting that you mentioned something that the participatory group is focusing on this new year. The need to create a bond between the expertise of private stakeholders, experts, technicians, at the service of and working together with citizens and public administrations. This is a triangle that I firmly believe is very useful. It's 
something that in the field of public participation needs to be consolidated. And that's it. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to sharing more interviews. Thank you, Juan Felipe, for coming from Colombia for this interview. You are invited to a future radio show activity or workshop of the participatory group. Thank you, Marta. You can count on me. Thank you.